Now that we've taken a look at the volume of prisms and cylinders, we're going to next turn our focus onto pyramids and cones. And we're going to begin this with theorem 11.8, which is the volume of pyramid. And this theorem states, the volume of a pyramid is one-third the product of the area of the base and the height of the pyramid. So from a written perspective, what this formula would look like is V is going to be equal to one-third the base area times the height. Now you might remember that base area times height is the volume of a prism. So a pyramid is simply one-third of its comparable prism. So as we go through, we can use this formula to find the volume of this given shape here, this pyramid. And it is a square-based pyramid. So what we need to do is find the pieces that will allow us to do this. We need to know the base area and we need to know the height. Well, what we're, we've been given is the length of one side of this base and then the slant length or slant height. What we can do is pull out this little triangle you see inside and calculate the height from it. So pulling out that triangle we have a piece that looks like this, roughly, 20 across the base because of the pyramid is 40 across from the midpoint out would be 20. 25 on the hypotenuse using our Pythagorean theorem, h squared plus 20 squared equals 25 squared. We will solve this down and get h is equal to 15. So now we calculate the volume. So v equals one-third the base area times the height. So that's going to be one-third of base area is 40 squared and the height we found to be 15. 40 squared is 1600 and a third of 15 is 5. 1600 times 5 is 8,000 and we'll put this into cubic feet. So we can use the basic formula to solve for that volume. Let's see how this would look in a little bit of application. The Pyramid Arena in Memphis, Tennessee has a base floor area of approximately 300,000 square feet and is 321 feet tall, making this the seventh largest pyramid in the world. It is under contract to be leased by a sporting goods company, and the new tenant wants a new climate control system. What volume of air will the company need to shop for, for uh, as they move into their new building? In other words, the volume of air right here is the internal volume of this pyramid. So we go through our formula. Volume is equal to one-third the base area times the height. This time we've been given our base area. Base area is 300,000 square feet. So we have one third of 300,000 square feet times the height of 321 feet. Well, a third of 300,000 is 100,000. We're going to multiply that by 321. And what we come out with is going to be 32 million. 100,000 cubic feet. So that is the internal volume of that pyramid. So that's going to be a very nice, super sized sporting goods store on the banks of the river in Memphis, Tennessee. So we've been able to work a little bit with pyramids here and get some practice in uh, finding their volumes. What do we do about cones? Let's take a look at that theorem. The volume of a cone, theorem 11.9, tells us that the volume of a cone is one-third the product of the area of the base and the height of the cone. Now, for a cone, the base area, so, sorry, our, first our volume is one-third the base area times the height, so that's going to be one-third Base area is going to be a circle, so that's going to be pi r squared times h. So you'll notice that the cone that is shown here is not a right cone. The 
top of it is not centered directly above the center of the circle. And that's okay because according to Cavallari's principle that we learned in our last lesson, the, as long as each area of every single cross section is of equivalent size and our figures are of the same height, the volumes will be equivalent. So for a pyramid and a cone, those volumes work for either right figures or uh, a more oblique one like what we see here. We're still going to solve it the same because we can still find the area of our circle and we can still find the height of our cone. So let's begin working on that. Our volume here is going to be one-third pi r squared h. So what we have is one-third of pi times our radius is going to be half of this diameter shown, so instead of 30 feet, we get just 15. So it's one-third pi times 15 squared times the height of 25 feet. Well, 15 squared is 225, and we multiply that by 25. Next, we come out with one third pi times 5,625. That figure divided by 3, or one third of that figure, is 1,875 pi feet cubed. Now if we wanted to get a decimal approximation of that and multiplied it by 3 and 14 hundredths, we could say this was approximately 5,887 and a half cubic feet. So the important part with this set of lessons, both the volumes of pyramids and cones we're working on now and the prisms and cylinders we learned previously, is know those prisms and cylinders. Because all you have to do is take that prism or that cylinder and divide it by three and you'll come up with the volume of its equivalent pyramid or cone. So make sure you have these concepts down and are ready to use them.